Hi friends and welcome to the channel. My name is Ebony. I am a furniture artist and I specialize in taking neglected pieces of furniture and turning them into something beautiful. So here is the dresser that I'm going to be working on today. This is one that my husband picked up for me at our local Goodwill for $5. And yes, it is a little banged up. It does need some TLC, but that's exactly why I'm here today. So if you wanna see what I do with this dresser, keep watching and let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when working on dressers is one, I remove all of the hardware, and two, I like to label each drawer by number. And I do this because when dealing with vintage furniture, many times it was handcrafted, so the drawers only fit where they fit. And in the past, it's taken me up to 45 minutes to get the dresser back in working order. So to avoid that at all costs, regardless of vintage or not, I just label everything when dealing with a dresser. Now, another quick tip is when I remove my hardware, if I'm gonna keep it for a future project, I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and label it by the measurements of the hardware. That way I don't have to remeasure when I'm looking for hardware that I already have on hand when working with a future project. And now to remove this wooden pendant thingy, I'm gonna take this heat gun that I got at Harbor Freight. I wanna say it was about $15, honestly, I'm not too sure. And just get something like a, a spackle knife or something to pry off whatever it is that you're taking off and just apply heat and pry and it should just pop right off. All right, so now it's time to clean and I'm using TSP and hot water. It's a two-part solution. However, they do make one that's already solutionified <laughs> it's a liquid that comes in a bottle but this is what i have on hand so that's what i'm going to use but you can also use dawn dish soap or simple grain anything that is just a degreaser so after i've cleaned the entire dresser i'm going to come back with a clean cloth of just plain water and it's kind of like a rinse so i'm just going to wipe everything off and then i'll be ready to move on to the next step So at this point, I'm taking wood filler and I'm just fixing any damages, filling any holes on the drawer that I might need to plug, all that good stuff. And then the next day I came back and I was ready to sand. So just go ahead and put on your eye protection, wear your respirator mask and get started. Okay, so when I sand, the method that I like to use is first I start with an 80 grit sandpaper, then I work my way up to a 120 grit sandpaper, and then I finish with a 220 grit <laughs> sandpaper. Now, I do really strongly believe that it is important to go through three levels of grit. However, you don't have to use the three that I use. Um, sometimes people could use like a 60 grit for the coarse grit and I don't know, a 150 grit for the medium grit, but whatever you choose, just don't skip eat, don't skip a step. They're important, they make a difference. Also be sure to follow the direction of the grain. And also don't apply too much pressure, just let the sander do its work and put on a podcast or some music. It's actually very therapeutic the more you do this. Okay, and now it's time to scuff sand. So I'm gonna hit the entire dresser with a 120 grit sandpaper, just lightly across every area. Um, we do this so that the paint has something to adhere to. So we're just kind of creating like a more of a, a textured base for the paint to grab onto. Um, and then when, where the places that I could not reach with my electric sander, I'm using a sanding block and a piece of sandpaper and just hitting the corners. So now we have to kind of rinse the piece off all over again. And in the beginning of my furniture flipping journey, I asked, why did I clean it first and then sand it and then clean it again? Well, the answer is if you don't clean it first, the dirt that's already on the piece will absorb into your furniture when you sand it and then it will seep back through after you've completed your, your paint finish. So it's always important to clean first and then sand and then clean again. 
So at this point, I'm going to wrap all of my drawers and I'm using what's called tape and drape. You can find this in the painter's tape section at your local hardware store. And this is kind of self-explanatory, so I'll just go ahead and let you watch. Okay, so now that I've completed all of my prep work, I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is primer. So I'm using this central pneumatic spray gun that I got from Harbor Freight. It was $21.99. It's my new favorite spray gun. I actually started with um, an electric spray gun and then I also tried like the gravity fed spray gun and the chalk paint thing. It, it just didn't work for me. So when I came across this one, I was really excited because it sprays latex paint. Um, and the difference between the finish of this sprayer and the electric sprayer is just like night and day. So it's like a, a really nice smooth airbrush, almost looks like it's um, like, a, like a factory finish, it's amazing. So I got the air compressor from Lowe's and it was um, a 20 gallon air compressor. It's the Cobalt brand. It was $260 before tax, before the warranty. And if you can, I would encourage you to get a bigger one, um, up to 29 gallons, maybe even 30. But if it's not in your price range, a 20 gallon will, will suffice. Um, and then just to explain what's going on in this clip, I was originally intending to paint this entire dresser one solid color. My husband was a strong advocate that I leave the top the way it is and paint the, the base a separate color. Um, and when I got to this point, I realized that he was right. So I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It looks amazing this way and I just decided I was going to change my design plan. So I am going to have to kind of go back and redo certain things or, you know, just change things because this was never my intention, but it's okay. Um, I think it'll be well worth it in the end. And then the next thing I have to do here is go back and buff out that overspray that got on the top of the dresser. It's kind of like a misty white powdery looking overspray, which is another good thing about this um, spray gun is that the overspray isn't anything too crazy. It's just a really light mist. It's nothing my, my sander can't fix. So I'm just gonna take a 220 grit sandpaper and buff that out. So I typically like to let the, the primer sit for a couple of days. So I figured this is a good time to go ahead and seal the top of my dresser. So I'm using a polycrylic and a foam brush and I typically have good results, but this foam brush I got at the dollar store. I honestly didn't even mean to grab it um, out the drawer. So if I'm using one from a hardware store, I, I usually don't mind, but this isn't really working for me. And then I remembered I went out and bought a zebra fan brush a few months ago got that idea from christina over at pretty distressed um but yeah so i went in the house and i grabbed that and i wrapped this up i just made sure to do about three coats and lightly sanding with a fine grit sandpaper in between each coat
Okay, so now I'm just taking this paintable caulk to fill in the spaces of the corners of the dresser. So on each side, there's a little bit of a, a crack there. And it's not the same as using wood filler, but um, yeah, so I'm just taking my finger, running the caulk through those spaces. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to remeasure my new hardware holes. And I'm only having to do this because I decided to change my design plan and therefore I'm changing the hardware that I had intended on using initially. So it makes it easier if I could do this while I have hardware holes to kind of go off of. So I'm basically just kind of finding the center of the existing hardware holes. And then I'm gonna plug them and I'm gonna apply my second coat of primer. So it all just worked out in the end. I was able to kind of fix it before it got too late. And here I am just kind of sanding down that wood filler. Okay, so after two coats of primer, I'm noticing that I still see some wood tannins coming through and this is kind of what they look like. Um, if I'm wrong about this, somebody let me know down below, but this is what I believe to be tannins. Um, and they just look like little brown or yellowy-ish uh, spots that come through your, your primer. Um, and in order to fix this, a simple solution that I found is to take a spray can of the Zinzerbin shellac based primer versus buying a whole gallon of this stuff. Because with it being shellac based, I've heard really tedious stories about the cleanup process and I don't want to have to deal with that, especially putting that in my spray gun. I'm not comfortable with that. So the, the spray can actually did work for me and that's something that you guys can try if you guys have the same problem. And here I am just kind of sanding everything smooth with a 500 grit sandpaper so that way I can move on to the painting process. So as much as I do love this spray gun, I do have to be honest, as with everything, there are pros and cons. And up to this point, the only con that I have about this gun is that I can only hold it in a vertical direction as I spray. If I tilt it too far upward, if I try to turn it to the side and get into the small spaces, it's gonna give you a nasty, ugly splatter of paint. Okay, so I am back a few days later doing this portion of the voiceover, so please excuse my voice. Um, a little stuffed up today, but the last thing I did here was I sealed the dresser with two coats of polycrylic all over. And the only tip I have for this part is just make sure it's not too hot outside. So do this either early morning or sometime in the evening and you should be good to go. Mm -hmm. 